Djokovic at points in his career has been almost like a Marmite figure, but I've got a lot of respect for him in terms of his dedication, his willpower, and that's been shown actually in this what's now almost an international crisis. Yeah, absolutely. But it comes back to the handling of this, and you touched on this just before. I mean, whether it's in terms of the due diligence and process within court, the Australian government, aspects around Djokovic in terms of sequencing of events, it's a complete mess. But in some ways, it was inevitable. Based on where Australia are at right now, um, and also therefore combined with Djokovic's willpower and Djokovic trying to chase down history, we, we are where we are. But the bigger picture, Julie, is that we shouldn't even be in this position. Yeah. Djokovic has taken a medical decision. He thinks that is in his own health interests. And while there is a lot of evidence to suggest that jab is a good thing for reducing serious cases, I have a massive problem with segregation or demonization over individuals yeah. who are making, in many cases, what they consider their own personal medical choice. And that ultimately is what's happened here. It's basically Djokovic versus the Australian government. And they've got a different opinion on yeah. this. And this, this is a crucial thing that, you know, you and I have been variously called, you know, COVID deniers, anti-vaxxers, uh, nothing of the sort. Goodness me, I'm still recovering uh, from having had COVID for the second time. And it wasn't, frankly, it wasn't as mild as I'd been promised. Still don't think anyone else should be locked in their home just because I've got COVID, by the way. Small point worth making. But the crucial thing is for us is that this has been about people making individual choices. And frankly, if you're over a certain age, you've got underlying health issues, I think you're crazy easy not to get double jabbed or even get boosted. I was delighted when my parents got theirs. I think for other people at lower ages, there is a there is a, a, a balancing act, certainly for children. I don't think uh, the evidence has suggested, as JCVI originally pointed out, that they should get the jab. But this should always come down to, as every other medical procedure does, to personal choice. And the vilification we have seen of the unjabbed um, and, and, and as sort of as as nutters, as anti-vaxxers, as as people who are holding the rest of us back as the cause of all the problems we've got. I find that to be very dark and very, very worrying. Julia, we completely agree on this. I mean, look at some of the mess messaging that's come out of the you know, there's comments from Macron, also Trudeau as well. Aspects of media where there's vilification there's a big separation between someone who is anti-vax and someone who is anti-vaccine passports. There is a huge difference and the water shouldn't be muddied over those definitions. My view is that basically the vaccine, the COVID vaccine should get to a point in society based on freedom like we've always had with the flu jab. Those who feel at risk and who are vulnerable like the flu jab should probably take it. Yeah. It will give them security. It may well help them in terms of their health benefits. No, the statistics but, but, are very clear that it, it, it does. I mean, we know we're not we're not yeah. science deniers here. But but the point is, it's it's still got to be about individual choice, which is where you come back to Djokovic, isn't it?